clear. This is Tanya Gabrielle, Wealth Astrometrologist. Welcome to Star Codes, the podcast where we look at an upcoming event in the astrology and numerology to help us navigate the amazing celestial energies for our highest good. And in this case, it is the Gemini full moon with the sun in beautiful Sagittarius. These are mutable signs, so they do indicate more change and flexibility. However, the full moon takes place at four degrees, so we're gonna get into that in a moment because four is a number of security and grounding and is somewhat inflexible, so we're going to have a nice balance here. So this full moon takes place on November 27th, 9, 16 a.m. Universal Time in Greenwich, England. 4.16 4.16 a.m. Eastern Time and 12.16 a.m. Pacific Time. And you don't need to be a Gemini or a Sagittarius to benefit from this forecast. You have these signs and this full moon somewhere in your astrology birth chart, so it impacts everyone. Now, the sun is conjunct Mars and the moon is opposite Mars. So Mars is a planet of fast movement, passion, fire. It can be impulsive, driven. It just basically has one direction. And it is very good for being conscious of your goals because of the real focus on one thing at a time. So if you don't channel this powerful energy in a creative way, then something may appear out of the blue to create some kind of shift or awakening. So one way to really transmute and channel this very potent Mars energy, because Mars is at two degrees in Sagittarius and the sun at four degrees Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is a fire sign and Mars is a fire planet, the rule of Aries is fire as well, is to really heighten your physical movement. That is always important with a strong Mars activation and Mars opposite the moon will need emotional balance and in order to not get aggressive emotionally or Gemini, which this full moon is in, Gemini is speaking, so communicating in an aggressive way in order not to go there, it is important to physically transmute this very fiery energy so there's not impatience or just, you know, barging (laughs) somehow in whatever way, you know, being aggressive. So the way you translate that very highly uh, potent energy is through creativity and movement. So it's wonderful to channel into some project when that requires your full attention. You can make a lot of progress now and you have more energy too because Mars is the energy planet. So you want to be aware of the sense of direction you're heading and no matter what the subject matter is be very conscious about where you're heading right the actual direction itself and at the same time guard against being confrontational or rash so really listen to your intuition it will always guide you to the most high vibrational resolution now gemini is about facts, it's it's media, it's communication, it's words, it's looking at two sides as well, the twins. And since Gemini is ruled by Mercury, it also governs motion and activity and the way you're able to actually share ideas and facts and information, writing and speaking. And so you're going to be asked to see how do you assimilate info, thoughts, conversations, ideas and since this full moon happens at four degrees sun is at four degrees sagittarius opposite the moon at four degrees gemini four degrees is a number of organization of planning of diligence of work it represents the square so it's also about architecture and real estate but also a box right so you're really practical you're digging in the ground, you're um, sticking to your guns in terms of a project and not veering, not getting distracted and veering off the topic. So the forward momentum of Mars gives you the passion and the courage and the confidence 
and a sense of starting something fresh as well while you also have this stability so it's a really nice combo now we also have another planet that really figures greatly in this equation and brings more of that practical energy and that is saturn saturn creates a t-square to the sun and moon a t-square means that saturn is squaring both the sun and the moon at the same time and it's a very powerful motivational force squares in astrology are all about action not sitting and thinking about doing something but literally getting off your you know what and doing it so a saturn t-square means that you are going to observe what you need to take responsibility for and that is one of the key words for saturn is to take responsibility saturn will be at zero degrees pisces and you may know that saturn recently stationed direct at that zero point in pisces and so it's a very important point being the beginning of the final sign pisces is the 12th sign and it means that we're really starting something fresh in a big way and this has been going on for a few weeks and with pisces it's interesting because you know saturn moves at a very steady pace secure patient step by step with a square to the sun and moon and saturn and pisces you may and with mars also in the equation you may lose your patience or you may dissipate energy or you may procrastinate or not get to work and saturn's saying well you need to apply yourself you need to be diligent a square is a tense aspect like i said it really is is challenging you to get to work and you may resist getting that work done yet your self-confidence overall in life is directly measured by your willingness to actually get things done that ability to step up no matter what the situation is really enhances that mars confidence so and also the sagittarius confidence sagittarius is a sign ruled by jupiter and jupiter instills tremendous confidence when you are on the side of expansion and gratitude and justice so you don't want to wait for others now in other words to inspire you or give you the green light or praise you before you get to work you literally need to be self-motivated self-activated and know that the seeds that you're sowing now are going to return to you in a major way because saturn leaves a lasting impact so the sun conjunct mars the sun represents our inner light our ability to act on our feelings our ideas and when the sun squares saturn bringing responsibility planning boundaries we also need to get extra rest because we may feel energetically somewhat depleted so yes mars is there as well giving us energy however it's got to come from a place that is so instinctual it needs to feel to the core of your being that it is right otherwise you will literally feel exhausted and no matter what the case is getting some extra rest is recommended around this full moon now let's go back to pisces saturn in pisces is almost like a paradox because saturn likes to get to work and pisces is a very sensitive sign and likes to dream not necessarily work so it's a water sign pisces it's about mysticism it's about spirituality it's also on the shadow side the sign of undoing undoing things and saturn in pisces saturn that we need to get things done planet is now undoing everything that's not helpful everything that's keeping you stuck so you want to really observe where you are with people with situations and whether you're labeling energy labeling people where you are coming into contact with somebody and you automatically label them as good bad dark light this and that by observing that tendency you can set yourself free and have faith in your intuition instead of past judgment in order to get your false sense of direction on how to proceed judgment also is almost like a key that we use in order to feel more secure but it is a sense of false security because in the act of judging others you are separating yourself completely so this is a huge moment for us to observe 
listen, get the guidance. And this is where Sagittarius comes in with the sun and Mars are. The guidance, have the faith that the guidance is there. Sagittarius is all about faith. So when you do that, then you realize, oh my gosh, you know, God, creator, source, the universe, it doesn't pass judgment. And so we don't need to go to that place. All we need to do is to focus on becoming completely connected and a unique expression of who we are without passing judgment on how others are living their life or other people's opinion or a situation that we don't agree with. The only thing that matters is how you show up given that situation, given that relationship. So there's a lot really here with this full moon. Now we have a couple other transits here to talk about Mercury, the ruler of this full moon, being a Gemini full moon, Mercury squares Neptune in Pisces. And that is an exact square during the full moon. So it's very powerful with the ruler. And that means you need to keep your conversations clear by addressing each thought with complete conscious awareness and guard against getting distracted or pulled into rabbit holes or falling back on programming in order to have the conversation. Try not to go right during the full moon deeply into important matters because this aspect of the square between Mercury and Neptune, it can bring some confusion, illusion, and make it challenging to get an important point across that you're feeling intuitively. So you want to be with people around this time that are uplifting and that inspire you and you inspire them. Keep it simple and breathe. After all, Gemini is an air sign. So focusing on our breath will be one of the important matters of staying in balance during this time. You can receive incredible spiritual insights with Neptune square to Mercury because your intuition is incredibly enhanced. Remember, this square is exact during the full moon. Now, Mercury, the ruler, is also sextile Venus, which is absolutely beautiful. It means you can communicate with pleasure and compassion and you can appreciate others with your words and they will in turn appreciate you and show you that affection. Venus is all about beauty and artistry and creativity and love. And, and so this will activate with Mercury, your inner poet. So you wanna pay attention to the words you use and the sound of your voice and how you respond to the sound of other people's voices, whether they are in the room with you or whether they're talking to you on the phone or whether it's a voice you hear in the media, how does it impact you? And you can really get a lot of insights through sound with this transit. And it will take you through your life because you will then start paying attention to the importance of a person's voice and how it resonates with you. Does it resonate with your heart or is it just an intellectual stimulation? So this Gemini full moon really holds you accountable for every word you speak, every thought you have. At four degrees, it's helping you prune and weed away all that's unnecessary and distracting. Gemini is filled with curiosity. It's a very fun sign being an air sign as well. It moves fast. There's a lot of movement. And of course, again, with Gemini with the twins, you are asked to experience both sides of the of the whole and if something that's presented to you is triggering you see if you can refrain from reacting and instead go into the feeling that is being triggered or the thought that's being triggered it's not always easy to do that because that's when you see what needs to be released it actually surfaces and it has to surface into the light the sun and you're needing to actually see it. Now, without judgment, you can see it and you can let it go. It's just that we get attached, right? And we pass judgment, of, this is good, this is bad, instead of, okay, this is what it is, and then allowing it to cleanse, right? Again, Pisces undoes things. So with Saturn at zero degrees, there's going to be a lot that comes to pass that needs to be seen 
and let go of and cleanse. Now, if you're asking, so we know we're in a big shift. When is it coming? We're in the midst of it. We're in it now. It's here. And people move at different rates of speed through any shift. And so some move more slowly than others. And so they may need more to shake them awake. And so then we see a lot more drama when that needs to happen, as we are seeing now on planet Earth. So people who are moving a bit more slowly in the awakening, and again, not a judgment, just an observation, they will require a little bit more shaking up or drama. And for those who are already awake and aware, it's absolutely vital that we hold the highest resonance that we possibly can to be the living example of what is possible, right? There's Once it's visible and felt and seen, it inspires. And so staying in your heart-centered space at this time is absolutely vital. And we're going to be diving into the big shift in a big way in the Ultimate Yearly Forecast for 2024. You can actually discover more about this forecast, which I'm giving live on 12-12-2023, December 12th. You can discover more at 2024forecast.com. And basically what you're going to receive is not only the forecast for the major events and the not so major events, we're really going to go through the whole enchilada for 2024, but you'll also receive your own personal sun, moon and rising sign forecast, your personal year forecast in the numerology, and you'll get the richly detailed 2024 universal star code guide. It's just loaded with amazing gifts. And of course, the three plus hour live stream and the Q&A. So have a look at this wonderful event. Again, it will happen on December 12th. You can watch a short video at 2024forecast.com. Have a beautiful Gemini full moon and a wonderful week and a happy Thanksgiving for those of you in the US. And I will see you in next week's Star Codes podcast. Lots of love.